We need a lot of repair work. But if we trust God, he can do anything that needs to be done. If we're rebellious, he can do none of it, but sadly give us up to the consequences of not letting him heal us. So what's really gone wrong in God's universe that needs to be righted? Is it primarily a problem of legal standing or a problem of our real condition? We've become distrusting, rebellious children in God's family, and have we reaped consequences in so many ways? Have you ever met a father who was primarily concerned with the legal standing of his children? Have you met fathers who are primarily concerned with the relationship they have with their children? And maybe it hasn't been the best, and their children have paid all kinds of consequences because they went their own way, and their fathers love them still and would do anything to win them back. And Jesus said, let me sum up for you the plan of salvation. And he told the story of the prodigal son. It's the clearest story of the plan of salvation ever heard in human words. And we say, well, it's not very theological, but he was no theologian. That's why he talked that way. He was the son of God. That's clear enough. The marvel of it is that our heavenly father is way down the road looking for us and hoping we'll come back. He's forgiven us long ago. He's forgiveness personified. There never was a time when he didn't feel forgiving toward us. It's just we don't know it. And of course, so long as we stay in the pig pen, eating that inadequate diet, or a little earlier, carousing as that young man did and running the risk of all kinds of destructive diseases, we're going to go from bad to worse. But one day the young man came to his senses. A little of the truth about God still lingered in his memory, his father that is, and he headed for home. He didn't know him as well as he should, so he was going to make all kinds of promises of restitution. I was going to make things right, and please don't, don't give me back my original position. Let me just be a hired servant. He didn't know his father. I, uh, he, he wasn't picturing his father very well, there was he? Thinking that his father would make a hired servant of him? God doesn't have second-class members of his family. We were all fully restored. And when his son arrived and started his speech, you remember, the father was so thrilled. Uh, the emotion in the biblical story is overwhelming. And the father wouldn't even let him finish his speech. He told him to go and take a bath, put his best clothes on. I wonder if he borrowed his brother's clothes. That would have offended him too, wouldn't it? You know, that saintly brother who'd never been in the pig pen. We have to watch, you know, those of us who haven't wandered so far, those of us who've been born in the church, we, we're not loved by a Heavenly Father any more than those who haven't joined yet or those who've been in and been out. We are all members of God's family or are only the good children members of the family. In your house, are your good children members of the family and your bad children not? Well, they're all members of the family. And who do you think about the most? Often it's the troublemakers you think about the most because they need it the most. You could almost say God loves the ones in trouble the most. Well, which sheep did he go after? Did he stay with the 99 and go after the one? That's the truth about God. That's the best theology in the Bible. God is not preoccupied with legal problems. It has been expressed in legal terms because that's one way of illustrating it in a very good way. It is not the only way. It was not Jesus' way. Jesus said, my father is like a loving earthly father, only better. And that story of the prodigal son is so clear. What would it take to right what is wrong? Or should we go a step farther, what has gone wrong that needs to be righted? Wouldn't that be the place to begin? And in Hebrews, we have a description of how God has tried to right what is wrong. Now, could we agree, we all have a background in the great controversy, could we, could we agree that the essence of what has gone wrong is the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father, our Creator? that some of us have more or less accepted Satan's lies about God. And we've come to think of God even as we even keep Sabbath, even as we teach the intercession of Christ, even as we explain why Jesus had to die. We show we have accepted Satan's lies that God is arbitrary, vengeful, unforgiving, and severe. 
And if Jesus were not our friend in court, boy, if you were left with a father, would he give you a bad time? What do we mean we have a friend in court and that friend is Jesus and not the Father? That's a dreadful thing to say, isn't it? Think what we imply and our children get the message. So you see, maybe there are some wrongs in our own minds that need to be righted. But all the wrongs I can think of ultimately go back to the wrong view of God. That's where it all started, the lie leading to the lies about God. Then if you're going to right what's wrong, it will require truth. And it will be the truth about God. And if only we could see God as he really is, we're still free to reject it. Lucifer rejected it to his face. But some of us, seeing God as he really is, having misled, been misled by many and by ourselves even during the years, another look at God. Maybe this time we will submit to the weight of evidence and we will concede that God is infinitely worthy of our trust and we are set right and the repair work can proceed forthwith, and God will do it as rapidly as it can appropriately be done. We might die in the midst of the repair job. Fine, God can take care of that. That's no problem. If only we could trust him, because he's proved himself to be trustworthy, then the all-important thing that's wrong has been set right.